Hi guys, uh, thanks for coming and uh, having a look at my video. Uh, I'm going to be playing Nebulous by Houston Software Consultants on the ZX Spectrum. Uh, as a child I had a couple of different Spectrum models, but my favourite was the Plus 2A because it was uh, a nice black case and uh, it was different to my friends and you know, that's just what I like to be. Uh, okay, so Nebulous, I think um, I'm doing this video because recently there was a game released on Steam called Upwards Little Robot, something like that, uh, and immediately the game made me think of this, uh, and uh, also with the news that Houston is uh, now making games again, uh, I personally think that this uh, game Nebulous would be an amazing opportunity to, to remake in uh, 3D. Um, uh, as you'll see, uh, the effect of the tower as you go around uh, on the spectrum was amazing for the time, uh, I think. And uh, even though there may have been better versions, uh, certainly the Amiga had a version that was very colourful and very smooth. Uh, I actually think that my favourite was the spectrum, partly because it's the first one I saw, but also because it was just a really, really good um, spectrum conversion, I think. It did miss uh, the uh, in-between levels little shoot 'em up uh, bonus round, uh, but the Spectrum used to quite frequently miss out these little bonus stages that uh, seemed to creep their way into the Amiga and the Commodore versions that uh, those owners quite frequently like to bring up uh, as uh, negative points for the Spectrum, um, each to their own, I think. Okay, so. I'm going to load this up now. I've got it on quick load. Um, and there you can see the uh, screen, uh, the loading screen. Uh, Nebulous by John M. Phillips. Okay, uh, it's a 48k game. And uh, the music is quite. Uh, <laughs> loud. Okay, so I'm going to just start the game. Now. I played this game so often as a child that this uh, whole level is pretty much muscle memory for me. So I'm just going to rattle my way through it. It's not until I reach level 2 that I start to get some sort of trouble. Uh, as I said, uh, if you look at the effect of the tower rotating, it really is very smooth through the spectrum. Um, just an incredible effect. And uh, you don't even mind it being in monochrome. Now, uh, even though this is muscle memory, I quite often fail. Like that. Oh dear. No, didn't want to do that either. <laughs> Here we go again. Oh, no, there we go. You may notice that as you go further up the tower, the earlier bad guys disappear. That is actually a godsend. If I had to do the entire level again, I'd probably get quite annoyed. And there we go, level one done. What would happen is the tower would come crashing down, the submarine would come up and collect you, and then you'd have a little uh, sub game where you'd uh, do a horizontal scrolling shooter uh, as a bonus level. No, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> So the first level I know very well. The second level I know okay, I guess.
although I haven't actually played this uh, for probably about four or five years. These guys you can't shoot. I think I want to say that I've got to go down here. Yeah, that wasn't the cleverest idea either, was it? So if I come out here... No, I do just drop down by there. That's fortunate. No, I'm getting really bad at this now. I'd be lucky if I do this in the time. I'll be lucky if I do it at all. I don't know why, but those bad guys that are currently zooming around always reminded me of um, Matt Tracker. Uh, from Mask, he had a, a mask and it looked very similar to that. Oh, there we go. Not so bad. I think this is where I start to get sketchy. I'm really not sure of myself here. as you can tell. I don't remember this now. And that's it. Okay. Let's see if I can do it again. This is back in the days, of course, before you had continues and save games and so on. Although one of the beautiful things about emulators is uh, you can, of course, record the state of the machine at the time and just uh, restore that at a later point. Very useful. I think some of these early games... Uh, oh! <laughs> Do you know what I was about to say? Uh, I used to know these games so well I could do them backwards, uh, and then I fell backwards. I was, go <laughs> I was going to say, uh, some of these early Spectrum games, um, obviously you didn't have the internet, and uh, being a pirate meant going to a boot fair and finding some guy with a bunch of dodgy C90 cassettes. Oh, I've done it again. <laughs> um, so what you end up doing is, uh, unless 
your parents like to buy you lots of games or unless you had lots of pocket money or access to a decent pirate uh, supplier um, you'd end up playing the same games over and over and over again and because you had to start from the very beginning every time uh, what would happen is uh, you'd become exceptionally good at them uh, and I think there's probably about 10 or 20 games that I could say that I'm very good at sadly I did count this as one of them but unfortunately I've done it again the thing's coming now nope <laughs> um. I'll tell you what it is it's because I'm recording this uh, I think uh, my practice run went a whole lot better and I think the second I turn this camera off uh, I'll probably become a grandmaster at it again I'm gonna fall again and the time <laughs> and the time for this up. okay let's try this like a pro So now I'm not sure how a game like this might translate to um, a touch screen, you know, for tablets or uh, for tablets or phones. Uh, but I certainly think that this mechanic of having uh, a tower that rotates with the character that stays central in the screen should be extremely simple to, to pull off with something like Unity or the Unreal Engine nowadays. Um, I'm not entirely sure that it uh, would have the depth required for a full PC release. That doesn't stop me from uh, desperately wanting them to make a remake. Ah, no! <laughs> All the way down here. Okay. It's become professional pride now. I'm I'm not gonna do this level. No, I. I'm too impatient. That's what it is. Uh, the time is gonna run. Oh my word! I'm right down the bottom. There's no way I can do this in time now. How shocking is that? Okay. Let's go for it. Try to regain some kind of professional pride. Here we go. So yeah, I think... Uh, I must have been around about 10 years old when I got my first Spectrum. And it was actually my older stepbrother's cast off. He was three years older than me and he had the um, Spectrum first. Oh dear, what am I doing? Uh, so actually I think the very first Spectrum game I ever saw was a game called Surf Champ. And you actually had a little mini surfboard uh, that you put on top of the ZX Spectrum's uh, keys. Uh, and then you would tilt the surfboard around. 
Uh, no, I've fallen off there. Uh, you would tilt the surfboard to control the character. It was an awful game, but it's uh, very reminiscent of sort of uh, one of the events in uh, California games. Uh, Nebulous was the game that he had, and uh, I really enjoyed watching him play that. I say watching him play that because he wouldn't let me actually play it. Um, but anyway, uh, on my 10th birthday, which was uh, in 1987, uh, I got his Spectrum and I got uh, this along with Outrun. Um, and you can imagine which of the two games I played the most. Uh, my dad actually was very, uh, very clever with his uh, use of the Spectrum as a gift because uh, I loved it, of course. Uh, and my brother had accrued uh, quite a collection by the time he upgraded to the Atari ST. Uh, my dad would give me a few games each birthday and Christmas to bolster my collection. And it was basically free birthday presents. That's all good, though. Um, but then what happened was I got to see the Atari ST. And uh, whereas I didn't, I didn't want his cast off, I decided I wanted to have an Amiga instead. Uh, which is what I got, eventually. Uh, and I actually played this on the Amiga, and wasn't as impressed, I think, because it was just basically the same game, but a little bit faster, which I didn't like, and in colour, which wasn't really a big deal. You know, being a Spectrum owner for so long, the colour was a good idea, and it was nice, and it was nice to see games that didn't have colour clash. But I think all Spectrum owners would say graphics don't matter as much as the gameplay. And certainly this game had plenty of that. Anyway, that's it for me. I'm gonna finish this video now. And let you guys get back to what you were doing. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it wasn't too awful.